Hi, I'm Jane Heitch. I'm CEO of Imagineer. Hi, I'm Claire Maddox. I'm the creative producer for The Bridge Project. Hello, my name's Orit Azaz, and I'm the artistic director of The Bridge Project. <coughs> Hello, I'm Lou Lomas. I'm delighted that you're all here in Cov, I just need to say that. And I'm the associate producer for The Bridge Project. Woo! Great, <laughs> lovely. Tell us about the context and how Bridge came into being, Jane. Okay. Um, well, I mean, Coventry, we live, we live and work in this amazing city where engineering, making and innovation is part of our DNA. And, and so in the city, there are bridge builders, car manufacturers, weavers, uh, sewing machine manufacturers, bicycle makers, a wonderful context for creating um, outdoor work. Um, so I'm just going to talk about our journey a little bit that led into Bridge uh, very quickly. But this was a project we did in 2012 um, called Godiva Awakes, where a giant, we created a giant Lady Godiva who went along the A5 into London during the Olympic Games, powered by her Cyclopedia, which is 36 interconnected tricycles. And this uh, drawing here by Franz Vesselman was our very early imaginings of what um, we thought Godiva should look like and be like. But if you look very closely at it, it's not really a very clever engineering picture. And actually, Claire, we didn't have the faintest idea how we were going to make it. It was just in our imagination. But because we work in a city which has got such uh, a, a sort of array of engineering and technology companies, um, we worked with 17 engineering companies and we created Godiva. And I think there are pictures of her along the road going to London. So huge success and thank you to all the engineering companies who took part. And this then led to um, us beginning to develop our Festival of Imagineers, which is a uh, local, regional, national and international showcase of art, engineering um, and architecture, actually. And within the program of the festival, we work with a company called Arup, who are bridge builders, and we started to kind of explore making bridges out of different materials. This one here was, um, we worked with a thousand children in Arup and created this kind of, I suppose it's a suspension bridge, installed in Coventry Cathedral. So we're just playing around with Arup um, and, and doing this. And then we, this followed with another huge kind of curved structure, which I think there's an image of in the next, if someone could press a button. Sorry. Uh, it's your job, yeah. And this was made out of thousands of lollipops and some clever CD printed uh, uh, sort of gear. So we, we'd, we were starting to play around with the idea of making bridges. And then at the, at the same time, um, the dean of the cathedral, um, John Whitcomb, um, um, was thinking about doing a festival um, which was uh, a plumb line festival, which was a hundred years celebration of the diocese. Um, and this was in 2018, and uh, the central kind of theme and symbol of that was about uh, bridging um, faiths and communities. And so we kind of came together with the cathedral and then started talking to City of Culture, Coventry City Council, uh, Worcester Council, uh, Grantham, and we started to galvanize partnerships to begin to move ahead with the bridge project. Therein I'll end, um, yep. and you can lead on to the next question. Brilliant. So, Claire, <laughs> okay. you're going to pick up now with how you then brought the creative team together. Yeah, Claire's going to do that. That's yep. right, yeah. Um, so, uh, I thought about this, Angus, and actually it's a good question, because I think normally what you would do when you get a big award from the Arts Council to do the biggest project you've done for ages is to find a bunch of people who you know very well and know you can rely on and build a team around that. And... Um, it only struck me that our collaboration was quite unusual when I was chatting um, with Helen Marriage, who uh, offered to be a mentor to me on this project, and, uh, or it was with me, and, and uh, I said, oh, actually, Orit and I have never worked together before, and she <laughs> looked at me slightly horrified, um, as if I was a bit mad, not because it was Orit, but I think because it was an unusual uh, thing to do. So... Um, but anyway, um, I was aware of and excited by Orit's very brilliant work with No Fit State and other people elsewhere, and her approach to creating large-scale outdoor work uh, with meaningful public participation at its heart. Uh, <coughs> and it was exciting, really, to look at developing a new model of participation for Imagineer. We'd done a lot of participatory work, uh, but this was a different way of working. Um, 
She also brought with her a real wealth of experience of working with a range of partners, community stakeholders, and given that we were working across three places, multiple partners, communities and participants, that felt uh, very reassuring, I think. So we set off together as a kind of pair of creative expeditionaries to look at what the project would be and um, find people who could help make it happen. It was very important that the structure had to be uh, an amazing thing, to be an installation in its own right, an artwork in its own right. Um, and we, were, we approached a, a wonderful designer called Dan Potra, who has huge experience in large-scale work, operas, opening ceremonies, so on and so forth. Um, and he agreed to join us and to work collaboratively with the architects and engineers who were helping us. <coughs> we wanted not to just have a sort of monolith, a very rigid structure, and so we talked about the importance maybe of using choreographic movement to, as a kind of counterpoint, really, to this very solid structure. And we approached Corey Baker uh, to be our choreographer, who had done a lot of very playful uh, choreographic work in public space and luckily he agreed and then the other thing that we felt was that it was really important that the project had some kind of narrative uh, and that it made a sense to people across the whole project not just talking about the evening performance uh, and we wanted to be able to tell a story and create not just a spectacle or an object in space but something that meant meant something to people so we approached um, a wonderful writer called Nick Walker and he agreed to work with us and shape the story for us. Great. You got the team. All right, you're on board now. So will you talk a little bit about how the partners and communities were involved in the development process of Bridge? Yes. So um, it was really important to us that our partners and their communities were involved in our conversation from the outset. To be honest, we, w we weren't really sure if our notion of bridge or bridging divides, we, we weren't sure how that would resonate with people, so we wanted to be sure to ask them before we launched ourselves on this giant venture. Um, so we did really a lot of our research and development outdoors and in public as much as possible. We tested the theme of bridging divides with really uh, very different focus groups through an hour-long creative workshop that happened indoors but also in public spaces, and we planned uh, story gathering events in public in each of the places that we were planning to work and we collected over a hundred stories from people of uh, bridge building and bridge burning I guess and those stories informed all our thinking so we read them all we listened to them all and then we thought what would be the appropriate shape for this project so as a result of the unbelievable diversity of perspectives that we uh, that we were offered from people from political to personal to family to professional um, there was something about how how wide people's um, landscape was around this theme then the bridge became um, a broken bridge and in a central public space which was always the case but also that, that we wanted it to offer a platform for a very wide variety of creative responses to the theme and that it would also become a set for performance. So as a result of our, uh, our research and conversation with people in all those places, um, we ended up with this broken bridge and it became really clear that the language of performance was going to include circus and of course that had a knock-on for the engineering of the subject. That would be an, an understatement, that's why they were laughing. Um, <laughs> because the, the structure then not only had to stand up and be freestanding and not fall on the public, but it also had to support high skill circus performance. So could you talk a little bit now about how you created those professional elements to the piece? So I can't talk and click, it turns out. It's okay. <laughs> That's the one. So I'm going to talk about just two of the bits because uh, we want to show you our film as well. Um, we, we, we created, um, we wanted to create an immersive headphones experience that would be the daytime companion of the bridge structure. 
Um, and uh, our idea was, if we can we give people instructions in their ears, which if they followed would make choreographic patterns in public space. So that was the beginning of our work. And we discovered that you, well, there was a limited amount that you could do with that. I mean, definitely you can give people instructions and they'll follow them. And we explored the choreographic impact of that. But then we got worried that some people might not want to stand up and sit down. They might just want to listen. So then we asked Nick Walker to write a story. And then a happy accident occurred. So this is the bit I really wanted to get across. The happy accident is that if you were listening to the story that Nick Walker wrote, it looked like the people following instructions were the characters in your story. So by accident, we discovered something delightful. Oh, my word, it was a delight. And, uh, and then we thought, OK, let's figure out what's really good about this. And we, uh, and we worked on it, and we made four or five different versions of it. And each one uh, became slightly less charming. And that was the learning, <laughs> that we really don't know what it was exactly that was delightful about that. But we went a little bit further back to the beginning, mm -hmm. because uh, somehow, whatever it was that was beautiful, um, by really nitpicking it and scratching at it and trying to over-engineer it, if you want, we, we lost some of the charm. So mm. that was that piece of um, story I wanted to share. And then in terms of the performance, um, we recruited um, some high skill performers. We, re we wanted them to be, uh, have a high level of skill in at least two circus disciplines and to have a performing presence that was legible at this scale. So that was the brief. And um, we, uh, it was a long, long, long process to recruit them, especially to achieve the diversity of representation that we really wanted to have. It just felt such a privilege to be working at this scale that we wanted to really um, have a, a very representative group of people to put in front of the world. Um, and once we had them, then the show, the performance element that happened at night, that was completely devised. So it was devised from those performers' responses to the structure. What can you do on this safely? It was devised from their responses to the theme. What do you know? What's your life experiences? We worked with composer Peter Reynolds, who we didn't mention at the beginning, but Peter came and just played music and we responded to it. Um, and to the creative collaborators. And so the performance was made through a, a quite a pure uh, devised process in, in response to those, uh, yeah, out of, the, out of people's responses. Great, that's really into, there's some really practical things to gather from that, thank you. So Lou, yes. borrow the mic. Um, full disclosure, you're one of my board members. How lovely to have you here. Um, you're a Bridge Associate Producer. Could you tell us a little bit about your role? Yeah, so my role on the project was to really look about community engagement and uh, programme the Under the Bridge programme. So, um, as Orit mentioned, the, the performance um, the, the performance at night, but we also had a kind of daytime programme that happened um, under the bridge during its three-day residency. And the images that you can see now um, are the kind of bridge kits that toured out to communities. So, um, what I need to say about this is, congratulations, Cov, we have amazing communities here. And, um, woo! And, um, and it took 37 communities that wanted to build these bridge kits. And we kind of went with the invitation to say, hey, Coventry, you're all bridge builders, to which some communities went, I don't think I really build any bridges, well, you know, and we kind of unpicked that. And um, when we kind of got to all the layers of it, when I spoke to, I spoke to different groups like Langeraid, who went, hey, we're bridge builders, we feed people, so they, they feed the homeless and, and work with lots of charity work. We worked with schools who said um, the bridge that they needed to build was across school rivalry or divides or all of those things, so the whole kind of breadth of that. And then a week in advance of us having the kind of bridge, uh, bridge in Coventry, that is the residency, these wonderful kits toured park spaces, um, toured kind of high streets, this is a beautiful one where we asked sport and art to collaborate together. So Freeman Dance did a kind of ballet on, under the bridge um, on this one. So it was really about kind of in, the invitation was to communities and being you know, open in our invite to respond to their bridge themes. And the kind of main element of all of this is also as well to think about how we kind of develop the outdoor arts sector with a community program with artists. So the invitation was thinking about you know, how do we strengthen the sector with our kind of under the bridge program also? So we invited local companies to be part of daytime activity under the bridge. So uh, Fabularium, Talking Birds, Highly Sprung, um, you're all in the room, Grapevine, you know, everybody was part of that, as well as community groups who uh, wanted to showcase how they responded to bridge themes. Um, that's a little bit about the program and bridge kits. 
Um, sorry, I've got a big list. Um, uh, and then I also wanted to talk to you about um, something that I'm really passionate about that all of you know, that I'm shouting the course for the freelance outdoor arts producers and our shortage of them. So for me, it was really important as part of this Ambition for Excellence bid that we really did talent development in the sector. So we work with seven producers um, across Coventry and Grantham, you know, in developing the kind of uh, Midlands Massive, as I'm now calling us, um, <laughs> as kind of strengthening the sector. And they had a bit of seed funding to develop bridge-themed projects that responded to uh, our themes that we kind of connected with. And some of those people, Simon, Grace and Rosie are at least here today, so do talk to them about it too. Um, we took them to Amersfoort as well. Yeah, we did. We, did. we had a very nice yeah. time. Um, so um, also, just to flag some of their projects, I just wanted to say that some of the projects that took part of that um, were kind of crisis choir and the main learning for me about that was it was about an invitation. So Crisis UK had never been invited to think about how they might do things outdoors. So we said, oh, hey, you know, do you think you respond? Are you bridge builders? And they went, yeah, we're bridge builders. And we went, great, great, great. What do you want to do? And they wanted to write a song that, which was about bridge building. So they, they kind of performed that. Um, I also wanted to say that um, to share with you as the sector of um, many things we learnt about uh, making work for outdoor arts and um, our experience of making new work. Um, that we really think the importance for me on this project has been working across interfaith. So I feel really enlightened and I have been uh, welcomed and, um, and it's such a great warmth in terms of strength in our community. I live in the northeast of the city and um, I really feel like we've strengthened the community relationships as artists there working there too and feel really welcomed and it's something that I want to build upon for future but also that community do. Sorry Angus, I'm going really yeah, fast. Um, working with engineers in the sector, all I'm saying to you all is you want to work with engineers, it takes time and resource, okay? It takes a lot of time, okay, to get it right um, and more than you expect. So add that in your budget lines and any of your timelines also. Um, all I want to say also is get support from the people who have experience in these areas. Okay, I'm calling it the uh, millionaire question of phone a friend. If you don't know the answer, phone a friend. I think sometimes in this sector we all feel a bit embarrassed by going, oh, I don't know. Um, it's fine. Phone a friend. If I'm you don't know the friend, phone me and I'll put you in touch. Yeah, phone Angus. Yeah. Angus is great. I'll put you in. Yeah. So just to say that most of, you, most of you had the phone call. Yeah. And I'm expecting the phone call back at some point too. And also I just want to say my learning epiphany was that um, having saw Zara, so congratulations to Mind the Gap and Walk the Plank, can I just say on that on another Ambition for Excellence project, um, that live stream. So watching your live stream really made us think differently about how we might tell the story of our project also. And live stream um, was really great for us because obviously on Friday we managed to get some a bit of footage and Saturday we got rained off. Um, we don't talk about that. Um, so uh, just to say thank you for that also. Um, and I think we have some bridge film. Angus. Should we, have, should we watch, watch it? I think we just click. Matt, we just click. We go. What happens now? Just click forward. I think. No. That's a different bit of our story, but it's okay. We just yeah. go to the end. Yeah. Film. A giant broken bridge arrives in the town centre. It's an artwork in its own right, a provocation, which attracts attention and conversation. People are curious about it. Why is the bridge broken? I don't know. What do you think? It's a stimulus for conversation over three days. We invite the public to listen to a story or take part in a story about how the bridge came to be this way. It's an experience in several parts. Each part lasts 12 minutes and happens lots of times each day, so people have the chance to try all the parts. Sharing this experience where you just stood out in the, the city centre with headphones on, it felt weirdly intimate to be in that together with people, even though you've never met them. Well, we've been hosting a breakfast underneath the bridge at the table, which has been brought down here from the cathedral. And the table was created five years ago as a symbol of a city of peace and reconciliation to bring people together from different communities around hospitality, around conversation. And then we can get people into conversations about how to bridge some of the divides in our community. Lots of different things happen under the bridge. People come together who wouldn't normally meet and do things together that wouldn't normally happen outdoors in a public space.
engages directly with people where, where they're coming out doing their shopping. So there's the orchestra under the bridge, which anyone can join in with. Very entertaining, great fun. I got to spank a musician. You know, when we're going through dire political divisions in the country, it's great to see everybody coming out and having fun. We invited groups and artists from across the city to devise their own creative responses to the theme of bridging divides. Some of the groups have never performed in the city centre before. We've had new performances as well as sports. I loved it every moment, I loved it, so thank you. We're so all much. laughing together, it's great. Yeah, so thank, thank you. It helps to, to build bridges between different cultures. It helps to um, yeah, build communities and bring uh, memories to, to cities and build friendships and, and so on, yeah. People are building literal and metaphorical bridges in the city centre and in their own neighbourhoods. And this becomes the spectacle. People stop to watch, they join in, they put themselves in the picture. People have responded on their own terms, different faith groups working together, the Bridge Newsroom who collected positive stories from across the city, the Crisis Choir who created a new song. Sparks curiosity and exploration and expression and that's what we need. We need humans to be able to express themselves comfortably in a creative way. We have a commitment as a city to being a city of peace and reconciliation, but then reaching out to people that have been our enemies to form new partnerships, saying actually this is the way forward for the world. Imagineer created a bridge kit inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's design for a self-supporting bridge. Groups across the city signed up to build a bridge and some of those kits are still on tour. People working together, team building. I do civil engineering myself so the fact that it was built on its own self weight, no foundations or joints or anything like was cool, it was cool to see. It's so refreshing to see people coming together in this way. So much can come out of this because it's talking about building bridges and there's so many, so much division at the moment and so many people feeling far apart and just bringing ways of trying to make people think about how to bridge the gap. It's just great. The residency culminates in one or two nighttime performances. Fixing the bridge was much harder than anyone thought. Living with a gap was difficult. Very very difficult. impressed by the level of skill um, but also the intention behind the show I think it was quite powerfully put across I think the audience the kids in particular that I was stood right next to a whole raft of kids were glued and I think the message will have gone across that it's so hard to try and reach across a gap in society a, a gap in anything um, I was moved I think overall it's just been a really good experience to see something really creative but also really interactive as well because a lot of the time when you're just watching something 
it's not as exciting, but to see this was really great. We have tried and tried to fix this bridge together, but it's not working. The live music and the acrobatics and the sense of joy and foolery was amazing. We wanted to tell a great story of the bridges built in Coventry this week. Well done guys, it's a time. So really quickly, what's next for Bridge? Super quick, if you wouldn't mind. So we're, we're really excited to have the opportunity to, uh, to develop the project. Sorry, that we're being upstaged. They upstaged me for the entire summer, I've just <laughs> got to say. We're not um, quite there yet. Uh, Martin, you... We've got a chance to develop this for next year. Um, we've got some focuses for our development. We'd like to develop the performance on two, for the audience on two sides. This year it was one-sided. We'd like to adapt the structure and equipment to deal more robustly with rain. <laughs> and we'd like to develop the presence and the meaning of that Leonardo da Vinci-inspired bridge-building activity throughout the residency and especially as part of the bridge performance. We really want to make more of this and perhaps include community performance in that part of the nighttime show. And that's linked to our collaboration with Ascension Dance, which you're going to hear about later. Great. Thank, Thank you to all of you. Yeah. Could I just say... Could I just say um, a big thank you to the Arts Council of England for, uh, for supporting us and Outdoor Arts UK for inviting us to present today and all our partners and supporters. Thank you very right. much. Thank you very much. No, stay. Just sit. Don't move. Don't move. It'll take long. Martin, maybe. So, obviously, brilliant ambassadors for Coventry. Um, and some stairs on that side, Martin, please. Uh, which, of course, leads us to Coventry's role as City of Culture coming up. So, Martin, how nice to meet you. <laughs> it's always those awkward things. Hello. Welcome. You're going to introduce us. Hello. Hello, are you? Uh, would you like to introduce us to Coventry yeah, City of Culture? Thank you very much. So, welcome to, uh, to Coventry. Uh, it's great to have you all here where we have 398 days to go until we are the UK City of Culture. So, uh, so no pressure, collaborators, innovators in the room. Um, I guess what we're going to do today is just give a very brief kind of overview of our vision and I guess our approach. Uh, and so much of what our colleagues at uh, Imagineers have talked about kind of really resonates because the, the bid that was created, which won uh, the title for the city back in 2017, was really centred on exploring the role of culture in a modern and di diverse Britain. But actually, the, the beauty of a city of culture designation is that actually there is no blueprint. You don't inherit a guidebook to how you do city of culture. You have to make it work for the city that wins the designation. And that means that the local context is really significant. So we are you know, one of the UK's youngest cities uh, age-wise. It's a very youthful city, very diverse population. Uh, this is a city which has turned two tones into one voice, which seeks to be the city of peace and reconciliation, but which is also uh, rooted in its manufacturing, its innovation history, is also now thinking about green futures, 5G, digital in a different way. This is a testbed city. So we've been kind of adapting the bid vision, recognising the local context, but the local context is nothing without the art sector that's already here. There's already, as our colleagues have mentioned, a really rich kind of outdoor art sector, whether that be the Imagineers, Highly Sprung, Fabularium, Motion House, Talking Birds, and many, many others, it means that we've got extraordinary foundations to build something remarkable in this city. But we also need to be alert to the national uh, situation, indeed our global issues. You know, the world's on fire, austerity's still biting hard, and we just cannot spend 
£40 million on an arts festival not expected to make a social impact on our city and to hold our stakeholders, our partners, our government to account. And so we've shifted our vision, which is basically to have this joyful celebratory experience in 21, but one with has an almighty social conscience. And how we do that uh, is through our team structure. So we've developed a, a producing structure which is intended to welcome two and a half million extra visitors to this city in 2021, but also to reach the 80% of our population to come uh, and participate, make, play, perform, design uh, events for 20, 2021. We want to reach people you know, three or more times. Currently, cultural engagement in the city means that 30% of our population only engage one time in culture in the city. So we've got a huge challenge to ensure that the city of culture is relevant to more and more people. So our team structure is such that we have three producing teams, a collaborative cities team, who are determined to work in every single neighborhood, every ward in the city, to make sure that this is not a city center ring road encased festival. We have a caring cities team with producers embedded in four extraordinary charities in the city, working in the areas of mental health, refugee migrant experiences, young people at risk of exploitation, and people at risk of homelessness. And then we have our Dynamic Cities team, and they're the team who are charged with the spectacle, the mass participation moments, those things that are going to grab national attention, but ultimately are going to drive the innovation sector development activity in their city. So today, many of my colleagues are here in the room, would really encourage you to have conversations, follow our journey, and revisit at least in 398 days' time. So uh, thank you very much for having us today, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, I, uh, I can't wait. Um, I had such a, when, when it was Hull's turn, I was always on the train up to Hull. It was great. I can't wait to be doing the same in Coventry. Um, and clearly, you're beautifully placed for it. I, I noticed when, when, uh, the, when you were recruiting, so many of the images were outdoor arts. And it was like, well, this, this, this outdoor arts is coming home to Coventry. Clearly, Imagineers and all the other companies that have been mentioned will have a wonderful time here.